Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the cabin on this uh, wet and uh, miserable day. <laughs> uh, it's a great day to talk about solar. Uh, actually, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine last week and he has a hunting camp not far from here. He knows I got solar, so he wanted to know about my solar setup. He wanted to know more about it, what I had, how much it costs, and so on. So we sat down and we tried to figure out if it's worth it for him to put solar uh, at his camp or maybe there's a better option for him uh, Anyways, I thought well this this probably make a good video in case anybody out there is is thinking about the same thing About putting in some solar and looking at maybe some different options uh, Anyway, let's go inside and talk about it. Let's go in out of the rain where it's uh, <laughs> Go inside where it's dry and warm I don't claim to be an expert at solar, but um, I have learned along the way, like a lot of other people. And uh, my first go at solar, I made some mistakes. I learned from those, and now I've got a really good solar setup for my uh, for my cabin. So if uh, just one person, maybe if you're a beginner, or you don't know much about solar, if you can uh, learn from any of my mistakes, I think that's great. Um, also to keep in mind, uh, there's no one size solar setup that's going to fit everybody. You see these these packages, you can buy a 100 watt solar system or whatever. I don't think those are the way to go. You really got to think it through about how much you need and uh, the components that you need. Also, prices change and prices can vary. Um, so if I mention a price in this video, it's basically what I might have paid two years ago. Prices change. So, uh, and maybe, you know, you'll be able to get a better deal or maybe you can't get the deal I have. Uh, that's going to, you know, you have to do your own research on exact pricing. But I think you'll be able to get a general idea uh, of how much this might cost you. Um, there are two questions to start out with. The first question is, <clears throat> the first question is, how often do you need power? Is it weekly, monthly, full time? I would say that probably the more often you need it, the more likely that it's worth it to go solar. And, you know, if you're only, you know, if you're only at your off-grid location, you know, a couple times a year, it might not be worth it to you unless you really want solar and you have the money and it doesn't matter. But generally, I think the more time you're there, the more it's going to be worth it. The second question is, how much do you need? And this is where I made my first mistake. Uh, when I first put in solar in this cabin in 2012, uh, I put in a 100 watt system. So it was a 100 watt solar panel. Um, it was a really cheap 10 amp charge controller. It was junk. Um, I had two 12 volt batteries. Yeah, they were okay. But I did buy a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. That's the only piece that was that I bought that uh, was smart on my part and I still have it today. I'm still using it. Um, so you've got to know how much power you need. And one little tool that you can use is a little device called a kilowatt. Now this little device, see that? You can get these on Amazon or whatever. I mean, they're $10, $15. They're not very much money. And how it works is you plug it into a socket, you plug your device in here, and it will tell you how many amps it's drawing and uh, how many watts, and it'll measure it over time. So you do that with each of your devices, and then you can get a pretty good idea of how much power you're going to need. Then take that information and try to, you know, kind of say, well, how much more might I need in the future? What's my expansion likely to be? And... Uh, that's how you're going to know how much power you're going to need. So you got to get one of these. Okay. Now you know how much power you need. For myself, uh, I have a laptop. 
a cell phone signal booster, a fan, lights, and chargers. But I also have an air conditioner and I have some tools and a vacuum. Now I only need to run those things a few times a year. So when I do need to run those things, I'll plug in a generator because I do have a 2000 watt inverter generator uh, that I keep. I used to run the cabin a lot more with it. Now I don't, it's just a backup generator, but it's always good to have a backup plan. And I also have a second backup plan, which because I have a bigger generator, which I use to run my power tools. So uh, I always have a plan A, B, and C. And it's always smart to have uh, an extra plan. Um, which brings me to the third question. Where are you located? Because it matters. Um, I am way up in the northeast corner of the map. And here, the summer days are long. The sun is high in the sky. It's awesome for solar. But in the winter, the sun is low in the sky. And the days are short. So solar is not as good in the wintertime here. So when you watch these videos, and sometimes people will say, well, boy, a 100-watt system or whatever, it's awesome. I can do all these things. First question you got to ask is, where is this person? Because it matters. Because a 100 watt solar system, maybe if you're in the southwest, I don't know, and you have every day is a long sunny day, you might get more mileage out of it. Because a 100 watt solar system here, not that great. Okay. All right. Now for the goods. My system that I have now. 470 watts of solar power. I have a 40 amp MPPT four stage charge controller, two six volt Trojan L16 batteries, 420 amp hours, and I have a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter. Now I'm gonna give you three tips and I'm gonna answer a question that I always get. So tip number one, don't cheap out on your charge controller. That was a mistake that I made uh, in my other system. Uh, get a good charge controller because it's worth every dime. The four stage charge controllers, <clears throat> the four stage charge controllers uh, take care of all the battery maintenance for you. You don't have to do anything to your batteries. The only thing you have to do is every few weeks, make sure they're topped up with distilled water. That's it. Easy peasy. Nothing more to it. Now you can use 12 volt batteries, but I highly recommend six volt batteries. There's a big difference. I had 12 volt before. I would never go back. Now that I have six volt batteries, they're, they're, they're designed better for solar. They work better with solar. And, and uh, there's a lot of research out there. You can do it. There's plenty of, of, of videos and so on. And, and websites you can go to. Six volt, far superior in solar application. Uh, finally, uh, get a pure sine wave inverter. They're a little more money, but they're worth it. And if you don't know what that is, pure sine wave is it's, it's the type of power that it generates. It's the same type of power that the power company generates to your house. And it's great for electronic devices and, and things like that. Otherwise, you're going to get what's called a modified sine wave. And they're not good for electronics like your phones and your TVs and your laptops and even LED lights. Uh, it reduces their lifespan and stuff like that. So even though the modified sine wave inverters are a little cheaper, get yourself a, a, a pure sine wave inverter. It's worth the extra money. Okay. Now I'm going to answer a question that I always get. This is a very common question. Are you ever worried about your batteries freezing if you're go away or if you're not if you're not there? No, I do not worry about it. These batteries will not freeze. As a matter of fact, if there's a hundred percent charge on these batteries, they will not freeze unless the temperature drops to negative ninety degrees Fahrenheit. And if the temperature ever drops to negative ninety. The last thing I'm going to be worried about is my batteries freezing. I'm going to have a lot bigger problems. So I'm not worried about it at all. As a matter of fact, uh, even at 60% charge, they will not freeze unless the temperature drops to, I think it's negative 20 or something like that. Anyways, no worries about freezing. They've never froze and they won't freeze.
Okay, I just want to quickly go back on the system for just a second. So it's, I just want to say it's very important that you size your system correctly and that each piece matches your needs for your other pieces. So what I mean by that is my old system, which was 100 watt panels, okay, and I had a really cheap 10 amp charge controller, it wasn't enough to keep my batteries charged, especially in the wintertime. In the wintertime, my batteries would never get to 100%. It was, it was terrible. Um, so that's because it wasn't sized correctly. I didn't have enough power, I didn't have enough solar power, and I didn't have a big enough charge controller to, to match the batteries. You see what I mean? So it's really important that each piece, that each piece matches uh, the other. Uh, now, so this system that I have now, which is 470 watts of solar power, uh, 40 amp charge controller, and uh, those two uh, 420 amp hour batteries, <clears throat> That system will charge those two batteries up even in the winter time, even when it drops down, you know, to 60%, uh, even in the winter time, and even on a cloudy day, it will charge those batteries up in just a few hours. So my batteries, I never, uh, every day, they're always fully charged. And that's really important. Okay, now for the cost. Okay, for the solar system that I just described, I paid two years ago, I paid about $2,000. Now, the first thing people say is, whoa, you know, that's a lot of money, uh, cheaper to run a generator. Mm, maybe. Um, you have to ask yourself, this takes us right back to the first question, how often do you need the power? So if you're just at your off-grid location, you know, a few times a year or whatever, yeah, you're probably better off to run a generator. I mean, that's probably all you need. And then it would be cheaper. But if you're if you're there all the time, like I am, I'm here all the time. So you have to kind of think about how much does it cost for a generator? How much does it cost for gas? How much oil? Every 50 hours, the oil has to be changed. You know, uh, plus generators are mechanical. They fail. I've had generators fail before. Um, but I've never had a solar, any part of my solar system ever fail. So I'm, I suppose it could, but generally, you know, mechanical things are more inclined to fail. Um, the other thing you have to think about too is, you know, you're sitting in your cabin enjoying the peace and quiet. Do you really want to listen to a generator hum? How much is that worth to you? The peace and quiet? Yeah. And then, then you have to kind of do the math long-term math. So the weak link of your solar system is your batteries. Your batteries will fail first. Now all batteries are rated differently. These Trojans, these L16s, they're 420 amp hour batteries and they're kind of the top of the line batteries and they are rated for 1200 cycles at 50 percent depth of discharge. Now that means I can run those batteries down 1,200 times all the way down to 50%, which I never do because I sized my batteries correctly so that they would never go uh, below 50%. As a matter of fact, the lowest they've ever been is 60%, and I usually don't run them down past that. Um, the few times in uh, bad weather in the wintertime that I ran them down to 60%, I just stopped and plugged in the generator. It has not happened very often. It's only happened a couple times, but I don't want to run them down because once you go below 50%, you're really going to start uh, uh, running down the life of span of, of your batteries. You're going to ruin the lifespan. So in the summertime, these batteries never go below 80%. Uh, it's long summer days here and it's not dark until what almost nine o'clock or nine o'clock or something like that and then you know it's almost time for bed so you're not really running them down very much uh, so based on that you can kind of extrapolate a little bit theoretically those batteries should last me for about 10 years but let's say they only last eight years and then i have to replace them so let's say it cost me two thousand dollars to have power for eight years. Well, how much is that? Well, it's like 
this much, 20 bucks a month. So my power bill is $20 a month and I don't have to worry about anything. The power never goes out here. You know, like people in town, you know, they're winter or storms or whatever and the power's out for days or whatever. <laughs> Not here, power never goes out. And you get the peace and quiet, all for $20 a month. So for me, that's worth it. Now let's say in eight years, I have to replace the batteries and the, say the inverter. So let's say it costs me another thousand dollars in eight years. Well, then my power bill is going to drop down to $10, $10 a month for the next eight years. Now, don't forget this, this, these prices are based on two years ago. Prices change. I suspect if you look at solar, how much it's changed in the last, you know, eight or 10 years, probably eight or 10 years in the future, it's going to be even cheaper. Uh, the panels are rated for 25 years. The rest of the system is really nothing mechanical to fail. Um, so I don't know what would, but for $20 a month, even if the whole system failed in eight years, which it won't, then it's going to cost me another $20 a month for power. So what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, what can you buy for $20 today? Nothing. So $20 for power, I'll take it. I think it's a good deal. Now, there are other options too. Or there are other things that you have to think about. So again, I'm basing this off of a 470 watt system because that fits my needs. But let's say you need 1,000 watts of power. Well, then you have to start thinking, well, how much is that going to cost and versus, you know, the generator scenario? Or maybe there's another option. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about this today because there's another channel that I watch, uh, AZ Off Grid. So I'm going to give him a little shout out because um, he's currently in the process of installing a wind turbine. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, AZ, of course, is in Arizona and he's saying that he has a lot of wind there. So... A wind, a wind turbine for him might make a lot of sense. And uh, he also has, I believe, a lot of power needs. He uses a lot of power, he says. So for him, maybe a wind, term is a, wind turbine is a better option. Uh, definitely more expensive option, but it could be a better option. Anyways, just some things to think about. And I hope that uh, this video has given some guidance or some direction for anybody who's new to solar or if you're thinking about putting in a, a solar system for your off-grid location. Um, again, I'm not an expert on solar, but I'd love to help people out. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm, if I can answer them, I will. Um, other than that, I'm going to end the video here. And I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're new, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. It's down beside the subscribe button. That's the only way you're going to get notified of new videos. Uh, also, if you don't mind, Give me a thumbs up. I, I definitely appreciate the support. And please leave some comments below. I love those comments. Keep them coming, guys. I want to thank you again for watching. And we'll see you next time real soon back here at the cabin. Now, this is a 40 amp four stage charge controller. So this basically does everything. You don't have to think about anything for your batteries. The only thing I have to do to my batteries is... Uh, top them up with distilled water every few weeks. This charge controller does everything else. There's nothing else to think about. And as you can see, this even charges my batteries uh, on a cloudy day. It's overcast, it's cloudy, it's miserable. There's still 44.3 volts coming in. Um, it's just almost two amps. It is quite a cloudy day. I'm still up at 100%. But this thing does a great job. Even on a cloudy day, when I get up in the mornings, uh, if my batteries are down 30 or 40 percent down, so they're down to about, say, 60, maybe 70 percent, this thing will charge up my batteries in about mm, two hours.